Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software and on today's video, Getting to Know Eclipse Part 5 Global Basics, I'm going to show you how to use the global command to enter basic entries into your dictionary. Globals in Eclipse can be separated into two primary categories, those that go into a dictionary and can be used again in the future, and those that do not go into a dictionary and are only changes to that specific document. Dictionary globals include entries that go into your main and job dictionaries, as well as any user dictionaries that you may have assigned in your user slot 1 through 8. Additionally, if there's a dictionary that you don't have assigned to a job, you can use the browse command to browse for a dictionary to put that entry into. Document only globals, by contrast, apply only to a single document. Trash globals will change every instance of the steno in the document when you global it, however will not be saved into any of your dictionaries. A local replacement, however, will replace only a single instance. If you've made a simple misstroke and you want to correct it quickly, a local replace may be the answer. And if you made up a stroke for a job but you definitely don't want to add it to your dictionary because you don't like it, a trash global may be for you instead. Again, trash globals allow you to global the same steno throughout an entire document but not save it into your dictionary. And local globals allow you to replace a single instance in the document and also not save that entry to your dictionary. I've made a sample document to show you some of these globaling commands. When you're globaling, by default, the, the global will apply to the document from the point you enter it down. This is an important consideration to remember when you're making a global. The first example that I'm going to do in this document is the brief form that I use for my own first name, and I'm going to global this as a job dictionary entry so that this job dictionary can be reused again in the future if necessary. So I'm going to global my first name, and you see that before I global that the steno in the note bar matches the steno that I see in my document since I do have my settings set to give me steno for my untranslates, and when I press Ctrl G to open the global window, you see that the steno at the top also matches. It's important that you make sure when you make a global that you're globaling the correct steno. If you don't see the right steno up there, stop and start over, and if you still are unable to see the right steno, it may indicate a tracking problem and you may want to give tech support a call. I'm going to go ahead and type in my first name, and since this is a job dictionary entry that I want to make, I'm going to either hit Control J to finish the, the global and put it directly into my job dictionary, or I can click the dictionary drop down menu, choose job, and then press OK. But I'm going to go ahead and press Control J, and you see that at the bottom right now, if I select the word Ashley in my transcript, it says J colon Ashley indicating that this entry is in the job dictionary defined as Ashley. If I put my cursor on the word name, for instance, it says M colon name, indicating that that entry is in the main dictionary. The next entry that I see is going to be the company that I work for, which is ASI, and this is another brief that I made up just for this job, so I'm going to global this into my job dictionary as well. I'll type in ASI and hit Control J to save it into my job dictionary. And again, if I put my cursor on the word ASI, you see J colon ASI in the bottom right, indicating that that entry has been defined in the job dictionary. Additionally, if I click on a dictionary entry in the bottom right, I'm taken to that entry and it's highlighted in my dictionary. The next entry that I want to change is Stuart, Florida. This is my correct spelling for Stuart in my main dictionary. However, for Stuart, Florida, it's actually spelled S-T-U-A-R-T. So I'm going to make that correction here. And this is another one that I'm going to put directly into my job dictionary for use in the future. I'll hit Control J, and my cursor takes me directly to the word Florida, and I can simply insert the comma that I dropped. I'm going to scroll down in my document and look for the next entry that I need to correct. Right here, I see that I used the wrong form of your. This was just a mistake, and I definitely don't want to change this either job-wide or in my main dictionary, so what I'm going to do here is make a local replacement global. This will simply replace this stroke with the word that I want it to use instead. So I'll hit Control G, I'll type in Y-O-U apostrophe R-E, and since this is an entry that I do not want to be saved into any dictionary since this was just a misstroke, I'm going to go ahead and make this a local replacement only. And you can click local replacement from the dictionary drop down menu and click OK, or you can simply type in your correct word and hit Control L as in Larry and you see that that word has been corrected, 
and if I put my cursor on it, it still reports that it is only defined in my main dictionary as Y-O-U-R, which is correct. So no entry has been made in any of my dictionaries, but I was able to quickly and easily correct this mistake by making a local replacement. It looks like the next entry that I have to work on here is the word foot. This was just a misstroke that I used for the word foot, and I kept making this mistake throughout this entire job. If I scroll down, you'll see that there is another one further down, and this is in response to body cam footage. So throughout this entire job, I used the wrong stroke. This is not actually my stroke for the word foot in my main dictionary. I don't know why I wrote it this way. However, I did, and I don't want to get in the habit of it. Since I don't want to be in the habit of writing the word foot this way, I'm going to make this a trash global. I wrote it this way an awful lot in this document, and although I don't want to train myself to use this stroke in the future, I do want to easily correct it throughout this entire document. To show you how globals work from your cursor location down only, I'm also going to global this entry on the second instance. So you see that I have my first instance of foot, my second instance of foot, and if I scroll down to the end, the third instance. So what I'm going to do is global the second instance only, and I'll show you how that works. So I have globaled this and I've typed in the word foot. However, again, I do not want to save this entry. It's not one that I want to get in the habit of writing this way. However, I do want to correct it for this whole document. So what I'm going to do is select trash or hit control T. In this instance, I don't have all checked. And so this global is going to go from this point down. And it's going to miss this first entry since I didn't global that one. I'm going to show you how this works by pressing OK since I have trash selected. And you see that this one has been corrected, but if I put my cursor on it, there is no entry in the bottom right for the dictionary. And if I scroll all the way down, my cam footage has also been corrected. And again, there's no entry in the bottom right indicating that my foot, foot stroke is in a dictionary. However, my suffix for A-G-E is in my dictionary. If I scroll back up to the first foot, what I can do is global this again. This time I'm going to press all and it should get the very first instance of the word foot as well. So I can hit control T to make this a trash global again. And it has gone back and even though my cursor was on the second instance of foot, it has corrected the first instance as well. And since it was a trash global, although it has corrected every instance of this stroke in the document, it hasn't put that stroke anywhere in any of my dictionaries since that's not where I wanted it. I'm going to scroll down and the next instance of an untran that I need to correct is this statement here. After reviewing the audio, I know that my witness said, I fell and cut my dactylion clean off. After looking that word up, I was able to find the correct spelling and I can now correct this entry. You see that at the end, instead of using my long on sound, I used my prefix en sound by mistake. This has attached it to the word clean and so I'll need to correct that as well once I'm done with the global. This is a four stroke global and so I can hit control G four times to grab it. Or if I'm in hyper keys, I can hit alt nine to grab all four strokes. Or I can simply hit control G and use the arrows to the right of the global dialog to highlight each stroke. Once I have each stroke highlighted, I can type in the correct spelling of dactylion and this is an entry that I am going to save in a medical dictionary. If I had assigned my medical dictionary to perhaps user slot one, I could simply hit control one to save this entry into my medical dictionary. However, I did not use my medical dictionary for this job as I wasn't expecting any new medical terms. So what I can do instead is browse for my medical dictionary to save the word dactylion into that dictionary. So I'm going to hit control B as in browse and you'll see that in here I'll be able to find medical. And it correctly globaled that word throughout this document for me. And since my last stroke was a suffix, it has attached the word next to it, and I can simply hit the space bar to separate those words. If I put my cursor on dactylion, you see that there's no dictionary entry referenced with it because if I press my dictionary button at the top, the medical dictionary wasn't in use, and so since that dictionary wasn't in use, it's not going to be able to tell me what entries are in it. What I can do instead is click the dictionary button, hit browse, and double click on medical. And you see that dactylion is listed here in my medical dictionary now and can be used when I use my medical dictionary in the future.
This is another instance of dactylion attaching to the word behind it. However, I also misstroked the word trying. So I'm going to global both of these words together. What I'm going to do is simply type in dactylion and trying to correct this entry. And since this is one I definitely don't want in a dictionary, and I also don't think probably happened again in this document, I'm just going to do control L to make this a local replacement. And you see these strokes are still listed together as one entry. However, there's no entry selected at the bottom indicating that this has gone into any kind of dictionary. So this was a local replacement that I made just to correct a simple error. The next error that I see is a misstroke for alligator. This is one, however, that I definitely could see myself making again, and I'm going to just put this in my dictionary as alligator because there's nothing else it really could be. So I've gone ahead and typed in alligator, and I can hit control M or just press enter to put this in my main dictionary. I'll go ahead and just press enter since main dictionary is already selected. And now if I put my cursor on alligator, you see that this entry is now in my main dictionary as alligator and I can use that series of strokes in the future. These next strokes are from marshmallows and this is a word I didn't have in my dictionary. However, the way I wrote it is okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put that in my dictionary. So now I have added marshmallows as well as alligator to my main dictionary and these entries will be available for my use anytime I use my main dictionary in the future. If I scroll down there's still one last untran in this document. If I scroll down I see that I wrote my last name and I'm going to go ahead and global this as a job dictionary entry as well. And so if I put my cursor on Van Dyke you see that it says J colon Van Dyke and so this entry is now in my job dictionary. If I open up my job dictionary, you see that all of the entries that we've added today are listed in the job dictionary. And if I open up my main dictionary, you see that the entries we just made into the job dictionary are also listed there for today as well. However, none of the local or trash replacements have been listed in either dictionary. Let's quickly review what we've learned about global so far. Trash and local globals do not get saved into any dictionary and are not going to be available for future use. Trash globals do modify your entire document, while local globals change only a single instance. All of your other globals are saved into the selected dictionary when you finish the global, either by selecting the dictionary entry from the dictionary drop-down menu or hitting the appropriate shortcut like Control M for main, Control J for job, or Control 1 through 8 for your user dictionaries. Globals always work from the point in your document where you're making the global down by default. If you want a global to apply to your whole document, make sure you check the all box. In future videos, we'll go over some of the more advanced features of the global window, such as review and capitalize and lock space. However, this is just a simple overview of how to start putting words into your dictionary. As a reminder, Advantage Software offers anytime support 24-7. Technical support can be reached anytime, including weekends and holidays, at 772-288-3266. Email support is also available at support at eclipsecat.com. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions about Globals or any of Eclipse's other great features or Advantage Software's other amazing products. Thank you so much for watching our videos. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications if you like our content. Thanks so much and have a great day.